you don't lose the focus if you're Craig Conroy. You're still moving out assets, correct? The only guy you're hanging on to that we've discussed, but I still think is a long shot to move anyway, would be Markstrom. He's going to be key to getting in the playoffs. You can keep him. Tanev can be replaced. Hanif is going to be a tough replacement, but he can go. And the boys are going to rally. They're rallying around Mark. So you're moving Hanif and Red. That's the firm word there? Oh, yeah. Got to. Can't walk him to free agency, and I'm not going to overpay him. Yeah. I mean, you need players. That's the only guy that I would hold on to. Like, I, I, I don't know why. But it's up to him. Here's the question. This is the thing. I stop there because it's not up to – it's up to him. Right? He's right. got a contract. It's out there. He could probably try to squeeze more from Connie, blah, blah, blah. I am not against keeping Hannafin because of his age and ability. But if it's if he's a, like Lindholm and wants out, that's fine. That's part of the retool. Let's go. Yeah, I, I get that. And you can get probably a pretty good clip for him if he, you trade him to a team that wants to extend him. But, again... You know, what is the marketplace? I mean, you know, you see Lindholm score last night. Happy for him. You know, I, I, I look at guys, Kuzmenko score. So you're, you're happy guys that changed uh, dressing rooms that they're trying to settle in. You know, replacing Hannafin, I think, is interesting because who are you replacing with? Maybe a younger Hannafin, like a 23-year-old Hannafin? Like, I don't know if there's any of those out there. Uh, like, that's the only guy that I would potentially be looking at Again, overpay is the question because are you going to give him seven million times eight? That's a lot of cash. But didn't get it done before. He turned down more than he that. Turned down, he turned seven, down and seven and a half. And a half. I think I the marketplace like has changed three. on him, though. I, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I think, you know, is the I know Lindholm scores two goals, but is there anybody that's giving him nine and a half million on the free market this summer? No, but he's not having a career year. Hannafin is like, that's the difference. Lindholm's having a bad year and he still got you that haul. Hannafin turned down 60 and is going to set career highs and goals this year and playing huge minutes. So, so somebody's going to overpay. I mean, you know, I just uh, had to do a sports center hit talking about William Nylander has one goal in the 13 games he's played since classic since cashing in 11 and a half sheets. <laughs> well, that contract so, kicks in next year. Don't even worry. He's only making 6.9 this year. Noodles. Come exactly. On. So he's still a bargain <laughs> right now, but it's, no, no, no. you know, that is the question when you're managing money is again, uh, Hannafin, I think is interesting. You know, Tanev, we all know and, and love. It's just, I think it's term with him because of the body. He's a Ferrari with 300,000 kilometers on it, you know, in my opinion. So they're, that, that's what, what it is for, for Tanev. But I, I look at it with Hannafin, he's kind of in that mid-range where if, even if you're in a retool reset, he might be a guy that you could overpay to keep him if he wants to um, and, and settle in with a new group. And I, that's top business for, for Craig Conroy right now. He knows that there will be a market for Tanev. It's a matter of when do you know that you've gotten your best offer for Tanev? Because I do think that that's a trade that you make. And, and yeah, for Hannafin, if Hannafin wants to re-engage, then is it still 60? Is it, is it more? Is it less? I don't know. Because you, you, could, you could argue that Hannafin could play eight years here, and you're going to be happy with most of those eight years. Well, he yeah. skates, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it just, uh, you know, it, I don't know. Seven is seven and a half is rich. Like, I know you're looking at, I mean, Kale McCarr makes nine point what two five nine three. Like, you're, and I know Kale signed a couple of years ago, but it's just, I find it tough. And then you know, you could point to the guy up north and say, well, Darnell Nurse makes nine point two five. So he's not good. The guy in Chicago, yeah. too, though. <laughs> No, yeah, the guy in Chicago, yeah. The, the comps you want aren't the guys that are wildly overpaid. It's to your point, it's Makar making way under market value to stay there. It's his defensive partner, Devon Taves, making seven and a quarter, who's a better player yeah. than Noah Hannafin. Like, you to know, me, you would say you that, over? Sorry, I'm going to interrupt you a little bit. Yeah, like, you say that he is, but I'll tell you what, Hannafin has played pretty flipping good this year. Agreed. I think he's a really good player. I think Taves is better. That's all. And I think Taves is doing the whole we're Colorado, we're in a window to win a cup. Yeah, McKinnon took less. McCarr took less. Theoretically, Rantanen and Landeskog took less. He's going to take less because that's what everyone's doing there, and they got a culture of winning. So you don't get to offer that to Noah Hannafin. You're not in a three, four year window where you could hang multiple banners. I get it. I just think Taves is undisputably a better player. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. I think. I mean, you look at it. It's just, but Hannafin doesn't. You know, to Rhett's point, he doesn't 
Like it's not like he's an ankle skater. He's a really good player. He's a top yeah. pairing guy. So he deserves the respect. It's just what is the marketplace? I think it's a tricky one for me. If you're Connie, you've got to weigh out what people are offering and then decide, is he replaceable by drafting and developing or finding a young guy from a different organization that is in win now mode type of thing. And the thing with Taves, you know, I, was it two years ago, year and a half that he signed that extension and to your point. I, I think that's a part of it. I'm, I'm going to take less than I would Just have if on. I'd have gone to yeah. UFA. It's, it's a very good deal. And there are some, it feels like the number Thomas Shabbat is 26, same age as Hannafin. and he's making 8 million a year. Aaron Ekblad is a year older. He's seven and a half. Jake Sanderson just signed for 805. Owen Power, 835. All those it's, guys do something. No, it doesn't. Sergeyev is eight and a half million. Truba's eight million. They're not all direct comps, but they're guys who have signed in the last couple of years and are in that sort of age group. So I get why Noah Hannafin would say, if I'm seven and a half, I'm, I'm in that ballpark. I'm... I'm maybe not as elite as some of those guys, but uh, seven and a half is fair for me. So I he just doesn't run a power get, play. That's I everyone else he, talks uh, about runs a power play. It's the only difference, do you know? Like you, you can't give him power play money if he doesn't run a power play. You can't. Okay, he so never that, has. So half a million a year instead no, of eight way million. It's seven and a half a year. Like the power play is a huge piece. <laughs> so, so you think Noah Hannafin so, should be a five and a half million dollar player because he doesn't? No, run you're the power you're saying play. the comps are at eight million dollar guys, and I'm saying all those guys are on power play one. Maybe Sergeyev power play two. Everyone else is power play one. He isn't. He's been here the whole time, and when he's on power play one, we say, why is he there? It doesn't fit. He's not those guys. The so you're saying six. It's like Campus you're Lindholm saying, you're comping them to. You're saying it's a $2 million hit wow, yes, per I year. Mean, I'm just saying, if he's saying it's seven and a half, he's probably not crazy. Retro, you're muted. I'm curious what Pinder is saying then. What is he worth? What's he going to get? Well, I think this summer he gets seven. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I just, to me, he is a really good 2-3 on a contending team. I think a lot of those guys you mentioned, the UFA market, are you ones. think he's getting seven? Yeah, what do you think he gets? I, I Honestly, I think he's in that seven and a half. As, as a UFA, as, as what a 26-year-old skating defenseman, teams don't have to give up anything other than salary to get him. He's north of seven. 26. On all teams Never in the playoffs, hurt. they have a better defenseman than him, I'd suggest, pretty much, around across the league. Every, everyone's got a better defense. Well, I just think the goalposts yeah. are moving. The goalposts yeah. are moving on average salaries. The cap's going up. We talk about this whole thing. It, here it feels like a lot because the guy's been what he is, and we know what he isn't, and he's been a $5 million guy. I don't think it's outrageous to say 7.5. But again, that said, I don't know if I would want to resign him either because you have – if Shillington's back in the fold and you can count on him, and I think every day that moves, you hope that you're closer to feeling like you have him. You've got Uyghur. You've got Anderson. Do you want to be two years down the road and think, man, we, we felt kind of pressure that we had to keep Hannafin, and that's 7.5, 7.6, 7.4, whatever it ends up being. And now there's another crop of young defensemen out there. Maybe it's one of the guys they just traded for. You'd hate to feel like you're backed into a corner and pay – money that when you're really not backed into a quarter does that make uh, sense it, yeah it's a good point too because you if you're drafting and developing or in a retool you need a pathway for somebody to play in the top four in the top two type of thing and if you're saying that Uyghur Anderson now what is Shillington in your guys's opinion is he a four at best for me uh, he, he hasn't played a ton I, I think he's a four or five at this point yeah, and, you know, again, God love him, and I, I hope he's great, but, you know, he's, he's got a long road back. Like, that's, that's really the truth. So I, I, I forget, like, Uyghur and Anderson, those guys run power plays. Those guys, you know, chew up minutes. You need a left-shot guy in there. I just, you're right, like, the overpay can't be for Hannafin – if you can have somebody, if you have somebody that's pushing through or you're going to draft somebody that'll push through, I'd like to see, you know, it just, it's a, it's a spicy meatball because if you get into having those three locked in on term, now what's uh, Uyghur's on term, what's Anderson's deal? Two years left. And whatever you pay Hannafin, he's getting quite a bit more because he's a better player and he's, I believe, yeah. similar age or younger. He age. runs a power play. Yeah, so, yeah, so you, yeah, so you got to, you got to, you have to have a pathway for, 
like almost the, the hierarchy of who's going to be your top guy, who's one, two, three. Realistically, if Han is Hannafin right now the one on the team, or is he three behind Uyghur and Anderson? He's two, three. I think you could put him and Uyghur interchangeably, but he's obviously all, younger than Uyghur. You know, I, I think, think Anderson's all three better. of them. I, I just think that it, when you look at good teams, you got to have a few guys that can play good. I don't know what Shillington is, to your point, Noodles. If he puts up points, he elevates to a two, three, I think. I don't think he's a number one because he's not going to be good against other teams' top guys ever. Right. right. And I don't think he's quite good enough to be so, so super offensive that he just controls the shift that way. But I, right. I listen, I think we're saying the same thing. You don't want a crazy overpay, but I don't know what an overpay is. And if you're talking about the difference between seven and seven and a half, it, it all depends on what the return value is for Noah Hannafin right now. As far as the trade, that's the that's the deciding factor. Right. If you're going to get. A king's ransom, sure, you move him. Yeah. If he wants well, to sign and you pay him seven and a half, which sounds real expensive, but everyone always tells me the cap continues to go up. So if you're signing an eight and a half, eight years, really going to be handicapping your team? I don't think so. Over the next three or four years, if he's making seven and a half, are you going to be so budget? whatever locked up that you can't make things happen. I don't think so. Well, like, and, then, and in three years when he's 29 or 30, you tell me you can't trade him then. Yeah, no, I agree. Like I, I think the biggest thing too is you mentioned Thomas Shabbat. So I do a lot of Ottawa games. Ottawa's got a lot of good players, but the pieces aren't fitting. If that makes sense. Like I, Same you know, Calgary. So that's, I guess that would, I'm coming back to it. You got good players, but the pieces have to fit in the puzzle moving forward. If Hannafin is a part of that puzzle, then you, you, you overpay him a little bit to keep him in there. Or I, we're calling it overpay, but you keep him in there where he can be a top three and you move forward with the three or four guys that you have. But the, the puzzle has to fit. And do you believe in Noah Hannafin on the left side paying, playing your top pairing situation? Because I'm looking at Ottawa, and they've got a bunch of left-shot defensemen, and they're, they're struggling on the right side, right? So you've got Zub, you've got Hamannick, and they've got this kid, J Jacob Bernard Docker. But on the left side, they've got Shabbat, Sanderson. I think Sanderson's going to be the best of the lot. He's a superstar, in my opinion. And then they've got Eric Branstrom. They've got a kid named Tyler Clevin. They've got Jacob Chikrin. Like, you, you've got all these guys, but you've got to see how it fits. So I guess the, the challenge would be for Connie... How is this all going to look? Like, what's this going to look like at the deadline this summer, 18 months from now? If Hannafin's a part of that plan, then you make it work financially and go, we'll, we'll bite the bullet, we'll give him seven and a half because we believe he's part of the plan for the next five or six years. If he's not, you move away from him simply. And so the cautionary tale, like, I, I think you get a good haul from him. I, I looked at two guys that went for a first and two seconds, and they, they have sort of tie-ins to what we saw last night. You saw Hampus Lindholm playing last night, top four for Boston. He was a UFA two years ago, traded to Boston at the deadline. They immediately extend him somewhere in the sixth range, I believe. Six and a half, and you know the Flames would love to use him as a comp. And, and, right? and less than the money, more the return. They get a couple of roster players, John Moore, Vakaninen, guys that help balance the money. They get a first and two seconds. You're like, wow, that's a nice haul. Yeah, but the first is Nathan Gauthier. I don't know if he's ever going to be a player. It was the 22nd overall pick or whatever. And you're like, oh, well, that felt like a haul, but does Anaheim really have anything to show for it? And then the flip side would be Travis Hamanick, who also went for a first to two seconds. He went from the Islanders to the Flames, and they used that first first round pick to pick Noah Dobson, who's going to get Norris votes this year. Yeah. So to me, like even when you're like, what's the return to make it worth it? There's just a lot of risk in taking a pile of assets and picks versus you know what Hannafin is. And I think that's why this is a bit more of a quandary than it, than it potentially should be. And, and beyond that, and to your point, it's what are you getting for the assets? But also, now you need to replace those minutes. You're not yeah. going to play a man short. So now, okay, we're saving the five million that we've been paying and the seven and a half conceivably that we were prepared to pay. Are we going to the free agent route? Who's going to come to Calgary? Who's going to be a good fit for us? We know what Noah Hannafin is. Noah Hannafin, 
Very likable guy. Guys like him in the room. He's the devil. You know all of that. You know what his faults and his, you know, his strengths are. I, I don't know. There's you talk about the Calgary tax. Well, maybe you got to pay a little more for guys to play in in Canada. That whole thing. Are you are you not just in a spot where you're probably spending that money again anyway? And like, yeah, maybe you got some draft picks, but what are you on the ice? And to your point, if you're not sure about Shillington, then you've got two guys. Because remember, you got nothing back for Zadorov in terms of a warm body. Right. You're and there's not a lot waiting to barge through that door Tanev's on the defense gone. side and right. you're it with the and, Wranglers and to rest point Tanev's leaving too. And yeah. Tanev's going to go. So my only, yeah. the thing I'd say to that, no, uh, sorry, noodles we're totally stealing your time here, but no, not at all. If, yeah, if you right. want to bottom out a little more than you have this year for two or three years, you can over those two or three years, find a way to get a second pair of defensemen you really like and probably have them under team control and not have to pay UFA prices for them. But you have to be okay with maybe being a little worse next year and the year after, which I think is a great long-term plan to have higher picks the next two, three years heading into a new building. If you're obsessed with trying to make the playoffs next year, I totally get the hang-up because you are going to be worse next year without Hannafin. I just argue in three years, you'll probably be better if you don't have Hannafin there, you're playing a five or a six as a number four, and you're picking higher. Like it's, it, You're definitely going to be worse next year. I just wonder in three if you wouldn't say, geez, I wish we had that top four pick instead of picking 11. Hey, guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out more of our content right here on the Flames Nation YouTube page. We had a bunch of great long-form interviews. You can check out some videos we've done as well outside of the studio. And, of course, if you want more writing or merchandise stuff, flamesnation.ca or nationgear.ca. Appreciate you watching.